Okay, so after this mechanic is done doing what he's doing over there, um, What's going on guys, welcome to another episode. In today's video, I'm actually finishing up an install. So last week, I actually had an issue with my Honda. So I was on my way to the States to go pick up the last parts that I needed for the Mini. Now, I had an issue. So I was driving on the highway, as I'm getting off, I start hearing this noise. And I thought it was this minivan that was next to me. I thought that their brakes were horrible. So I was like, wow, that sounds really bad. So we come to a stop, we stop moving, we come to a red. As the light turns green, I notice that noise come back again. And I noticed that the minivan wasn't moving. The problem was my transmission decided it wanted to go on me. So after that noise started to happen, first gear kind of was a little iffy, second gear wasn't exactly feeling so good. So I was like, okay, this is not good at all. As I kept driving, the noise got worse and worse and I was like, okay, this is it, transmission is pooched. So what did I do? So the last two days, I've been working on my Accord. So this is my 09 Accord, it's got 220,000 kilometers, give or take. <clears throat> The OEM transmission is a K24 Z3 five speed, open diff, 4.39 final drive transmission. It's decent, does the trick. If you ever really wanna push your car or get the most out of it, this transmission isn't exactly good. So I figured this is a perfect opportunity for me to install my new training. Now the new transmission is out of a Civic Si. It's a K24 Z7 training. Now the difference is, that was a five speed, this is a six speed. That's an open diff, this has an LSD built into it. That had a 4.39 final drive, this has a 4.76 or 74, something like that. Which means that these gears are shorter, which means I'll be able to accelerate quicker. Now, this right here is actually my old transmission. The one that's in the car now is the K24 Z7 one. I wasn't sure if it was going to work. I wasn't sure if it was gonna line up properly. I wasn't sure if this conversion was going to work or not. So I've heard a lot of people saying, you know, some K parts, work on other K-series parts, you know, some parts don't, so I was kind of in the air about it. Took a chance, I spent 550 bucks on this new transmission, or new to me transmission. Um, it's got 70,000 clicks and it came out of a wrecked Civic. So I put the new transmission in there, I made it up to the stock clutch, the stock engine, and eventually I am going to be modifying that. I do have more parts over here and back there. I have two more engines that I wanna play around with. Um, but right now I need to get my cord going because this is my daily. So the last two days, I ripped the engine and transmission, pulled it up and out, pulled it out of the engine bay, uh, put everything back together. I made sure that the clutch material that I had uh, on my OEM clutch and flywheel setup was still good and healthy. Now, because this car is old, I knew that eventually I would have to change it out. So I have an Exedi Stage 2 clutch and flywheel assembly, but, the reason why I didn't install it is because I eventually want to replace the engine that's in here with one of my new ones. Now, when I do that, I want to build the bottom end. Now, when you build the bottom end, you need to balance it. And you need the flywheel in order to do that. So you need to have all that out of the car so you can send it out to get it balanced, machined, and done all that. So if I were to put that flywheel and clutch assembly in here, I wouldn't be able to use it for the next build. Unless I would have to have my car out of commission for a little bit. That's why I decided against that. So I have pretty much the car ready to go, but I first wanted to show you the difference between the two transmissions. So if you guys ever decide to do this kind of swap, you know what to expect. So I'm almost done with the install. I've just got a couple more final things to do, but here is the transmission that I'm talking about. So I did have to cut a couple clips and I have like more zip ties holding the wiring harness in place. But the main difference that I noticed between this, let alone the internals, in the exterior casing, in order for this to be direct bolt-on, you will need a new nut that fits on the stud here for this transmission. The K24Z3, which is the stock transmission out of my cord, it has a bolt here and two more on the back side of the transmission mount. The K24Z7, so the Civic Si, does not have that. It has two bolts in the back and then one stud and nut up front. So if you're gonna do this, you're going to need a nut or a stud if it's not attached to the transmission, but it should be. The other difference that I noticed was on the shifter assembly right here. So can you guys take a look at this? This is the shifter assembly. Okay, so up, down, does its thing as it's supposed to. This back here, there's like a little electronic servo, which is the reverse gear lockout. 
there is no connector, there's no electrical connector on the Accord for me to hook that up to. So I don't have a lockout mechanism that's keeping me from shifting into reverse while I'm driving forward. So the sixth gear that's found inside of here is actually in the location of the reverse gear from my old transmission. So on the old transmission, you can see that there is no electronic part found over here. But other than that, it is a direct bolt-on. So this is the old transmission, and the biggest giveaway between an open diff and an LSD is an open differential, you will not be able to see through it. So there's a little bar that goes in between the differential, and you'll be able to see that you cannot see the other side. With an LSD, you can. Now I don't have the axles installed in the car yet, but you can see directly through it. So I have a light on the other side and you can see that there's light that's coming and protruding through the tranny. So you can tell that this transmission comes equipped with an LSD. Other than that, it is a direct bolt-on. So you can use the OEM shifter cables, you can use the OEM axles, you don't need to purchase new ones, they all will work as they are. So you can also go ahead and use your standard clutch setup, you do not need to buy a new one. If you purchase a K24Z transmission, you can use the axles, you can use the clutch, you can use the flywheel assembly, and it's all super easy to do. Now I found it easier to pull the entire engine and transmission together in one shot from the engine bay up. The repair manual says that you should remove the transmission from the bottom. So they want you to drop the subframe and then go that way. I didn't want to go that route. I don't know if this is any easier, but this is the way that I did it and it worked pretty good. Um, but as for everything else, I just wanted to give you guys a heads up. This does work. I want to take this for a spin. I need to put all the fluids in the car, so I need to put the coolant, engine oil, tranny fluid, power steering, all that stuff. Any fluids that I removed, I need to put in, and then I can take this thing for a spin. I am really hoping that this transmission works as it should, and it should definitely liven the car up. Launches are going to be nicer because instead of it being one-wheel drive, it's going to be two. It's going to have an extra gear that's going to be going from a five to a six-speed, and the gears are going to be shorter themselves because of the final Final drive. This should be a recipe for a good time. All I need to do next is add some power and this Accord should be seriously quick. It should actually be able to rival the V6 Accords after I'm done all this stuff. But the V6s are opened if this is LSD. So this actually might win, but we'll see. Anyways, I got a little bit of work ahead of me. I need to do all that stuff, but once I'm done, I'll get the camera started back up and show you guys how awesome this trainee is. Alrighty guys, so I have the car pretty much ready to go, ready to fire up. The last thing that I need to do is torque up the wheels, but as for right now, I have it up on jack stands and I want to turn the car on to make sure that everything works. So I already went ahead and filled up all the engine, the transmission, power steering, and coolant. I filled all that stuff up. It's all ready and it's at the proper level. So I'm just going to be turning the car on and hopefully, fingers crossed, this should all work. So the engine right now is warming up. There's no leaks, everything seems to be good. I have everything connected, so the axles are all bolted up. The shifter cables are all hooked up to everything. The engine's running as it should. The coolant right now is bleeding. So I should be good, I just topped that up because I had to take the engine out. So everything is actually working the way it's supposed to. That's awesome. Now, inside the car, everything's looking good. I do not have a check engine light, which is nice. Everything's running fine, I do need to get gas. Battery I need to reset because I, well, unplugged it when I did all this. But so far this all looks to be pretty good. So I'm gonna let this warm up a little bit, uh, put it down on the ground, and then take this outside, and maybe we'll take this thing for a rip. On another note, here is my old transmission. So this is the reason why my transmission went to town on me. So it broke and I found the culprit. So down in here there's a little transmission magnet that will collect any particles of metal that are floating inside the fluid. Now I removed the magnet, and on the magnet, I found a couple, uh, couple interesting things. So see those two like large pieces? Those are two teeth of a gear. So those broke off and they were floating around in the transmission fluid and then the magnet safely caught it. But the damage at this point was too far. This transmission is pretty much shot. I wanna see what parts I can salvage because even some of these gears, they don't exactly look like they're in the best shape. This is, I guess, what happens when you send your car for let's say 200,000 kilometers or basically however long I had it. Now, I also don't know how rough the previous owner was in driving the car. They probably weren't as aggressive as me, but yeah, it's not exactly spinning right now. So 
yeah, this transmission's pretty much pooched. But the big difference between this trainee and the one that I just put in the Accord is this here is an open diff. So see how you can't see through it? See the little bar that goes across? That means it's an open diff and this final drive, this large gear here that circles around the differential on this transmission is smaller than the one that's inside the new transmission. So the new one is about 10% larger, which means every single one of these gears is going to be 10% smaller than if this were to be on the different final drive. What's happening guys, welcome to another episode. So today's, uh, today's been a long day. We've been working on the Accord for a decent amount of time and we found out that after we put the engine and transmission back in the car, with, uh, there was an issue with the transmission. So something is up with it. I have the flywheel hooked up, I have both axles in the car and with the car in gear, nothing moves. Forwards, backwards, nothing. So we have to unfortunately take the transmission uh, apart from the engine again. This is gonna be Luca and I's second time pulling this this week. So uh, we're, getting, we're getting some good practice, but unfortunately it's just you know stupid thing after stupid thing. So she's coming out. From the looks of it, it's pretty clear. So we have all the mounts on the front, sides, bottom, rear, this guy here, they're all removed. Exhaust is removed from the car. The intake is removed from the car, axles are out, um, batteries disconnected, and it comes out, honestly, not too bad. So you can see I have the driver and passenger axles down there, the cooling tubes right here, the, the ones that are going to and from the rad along with the ones that are going to the heater core, strut brace, downpipe, intake, ECU cover, serpentine belt, um, and here are the motor mounts. Other than that, the engine is coming out rather nicely. Okay, so after this mechanic is done doing what he's doing over there, um, to get the transmission disconnected from the engine, there's going to be seven bolts you have to remove. Uh, there's one bottom one that's gonna be difficult to get to. You're gonna have to remove this little cover that's attached to the crank uh, sensor. You're also gonna have to remove this mount right here for the back side of the motor. Following that, you're gonna need to support the weight of the transmission so that you can support it and then pull it out from the engine. Okay guys, so it's almost two o'clock at night and I think Luca and I found out why the transmission wasn't putting any power down. So when I got the car, I took it outside under its own power. That was fine. I thought that when I switched from reverse to first, we originally thought that the, uh, the solenoid right here that's attached to the shifter selector, I thought that was preventing us from going back into gear. But technically this will only prevent you from going into reverse if you're moving forward. So. With that out of the way, Luca and I thought of a couple different things. So we thought, okay, maybe the transmission that I got was broken. Now, after inspecting a little bit more, it doesn't look like that's the case. Um, we also thought that the clutch slash flywheel setup wasn't touching the splines of the transmission. Now, after opening that up and inspecting everything, because I inspected it before, I thought, you know, what if I put the clutch disc on backwards? And let's say it wasn't reaching the teeth. So we double checked it, opened it up, torqued the back all up, it's all fine. But um, Luca and I found out what the issue is. So when I went to go and drive the car forward, I turned the wheel a little bit while I had the car in drive. Now what happened is that once the car had load on it, I heard a pop. Now I thought, okay, maybe something in the transmission went. So we pulled the transmission from the engine and we pulled all that from the engine bay. No, it's a lot easier of a solution. You see this right here? Luke, I want you to get a close up. See that? That's a C-clip. I'll give you a hint where this goes. It goes on one of these, but not this one here. This one's for the passenger side. This one attaches on the driver's side axle. So there's gonna be one of these holding the cup part here of the, of the axle into the transmission, and it mounts right here. So I removed it only so that we could find out how much this goes into the training to make sure this fits or not. Because when I bought these axles, I test fitted them into this training to make sure they worked. But the issue was that this C-clip wasn't letting the axle completely seat itself into the transmission. So Luca and I opened up 
a partial area of the transmission, removed this little plug there along with the shifter selector, inspected the inside and it all looks to be in unbelievably good condition. So on the outside, not exactly so pretty, inside looks freaking brand new. So I am quite content with this. So tomorrow we're gonna be able to install this back on the car, put both sides of the axles in, get this all running nicely and fingers crossed, get this running. But again, this whole process had to take place because I wasn't able to install the axle fully. I thought it was fully seated because it basically stopped and I couldn't pull it out, but clearly it wasn't. So not a big deal. You know, we're just getting some more practice working on this stuff, but engine and trans are almost ready to go. Tomorrow morning after this is done setting, the Honda Bond, um, we'll get started working on this and get this back together. So about an hour and a half later, we have the engine in. We're just putting up the last peripheral components in. So we have the downpipe, we have the serpentine belt, intake, and a couple other bolts to go in. But that's pretty much it. Um, next up, once those are all done, is we need to put the fluids back in. So we need new transmission fluid, new coolant, uh, check the engine oil level, make sure everything's fine, and then we should be able to start this thing up and get this thing going. Very nice. Very nice. Alrighty guys, so um, honestly so far it's pretty damn good. I'm impressed, it's got a six speed transmission, it has a limited slip diff. I haven't pushed the car yet, but as soon as I actually get the car like, you know, driving a little bit more, once I know that the transmission is healthy, once I get the fluid going, once I get all of that sorted, then I will push the car and let you guys know how it is. Now, just my first initial thoughts, um, I noticed that driving this car is a little bit different because the gear ratios are shorter than my old transmission. Now on top of that, I also have an extra gear. So I'm gonna have to get used to the driving style that this is versus the old setup that I had before. Um, the other thing that I have to do is play around with my ECU. So my ECU thinks right now that I still have a five speed transmission in my car. Um, I need to play around with it to figure out uh, if I can change my gear ratios and everything in the computer because even if I put the, the transmission in sixth gear, it thinks I'm in fifth. And the same thing works if I'm in fifth gear. It doesn't recognize that there's an additional gear. Um, not only that, I need to play around with my launch control settings now that I have essentially double the grip. So when you're doing a launch, if you have an open differential, you have power going to one wheel only. Whichever wheel has the least amount of traction. Um, it's a kind of unfortunate situation, but that's how most cars are nowadays. If you want something nicer, which is what I have in this transmission now, an LSD, you'll be going from a one to a two wheel drive. So if you launch it or if you floor it off of the line, both wheels will spin. So I need to play around with that, play around with the launch control, and it also varies with my tires, but that is all gonna be played around with my K-Tuner setup. If you guys haven't seen what tuner I'm running on my Accord or you know on any other Honda that you guys have, this is awesome. It's a K-Tuner V2, and there's gonna be a link in the description box, and I'll see if I can put one in the outro, because it is seriously awesome. I love the thing. But I'm pumped because I had the Accord out, I had the engine removed and transmission removed twice, and it wasn't exactly fun. Um, yeah, it was quite discouraging when I found out that the axle wasn't fully pushed in, and because of that, you know, it didn't work. But whatever, you live, you learn. It was fun. Luca and I pulled the transmission, so he got to learn a little bit about this car. This was his first engine and trans that he's pulled. This was not my first, but this uh, it definitely was a learning experience. Note to self, watch out for that C-clip. Make sure the axles are all the way in. It was literally out by, like, probably that much, like half a quarter of an inch. So, um, yeah, that's where this video is going to be ending. I'm going to be putting some gas in this thing. I want to take this thing for a drive, enjoy this a little more, see how I like it, and keep you guys up to date with this. But so far, it's a direct bolt-on, and I friggin' love it. Ah, uh, yeah, it's good. Anyways, guys, if you have any further questions, comment sections down there. You guys know what to do. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.